What's going on guys? We are back. We are talking about Dazrin's Covert Tournament and so far we have played through the qualifiers and now we're into the group stage where the best of North America will battle it out and that's what we're going to talk about today. The pools, the predictions, which group is the hardest, so on and so forth from there. So to really quickly catch you up, obviously this tournament is a $9,000 tournament. It is partnered with Psyonix for that $300,000 through June and July. Uh, so on Monday and Tuesday, Dazrin held his qualifiers for this said tournament. And not a lot of teams can make it. Only top six make it. Plot Twist and Loco, they came out on top. Uh, so they get the the preferential seeding going into groups. And we'll explain how those work out. But you have your 10 ROCS teams, then the other teams that qualified. Your top six from that. And then they get thrown into groups. Now Dazrin... Uh, he's doing four groups of four, round robin, best of five, top two advance into the playoffs. Um, the way he seeded his groups was a bit randomized, and we're going to talk about that. Like I personally like a bit of uh, randomization when it comes to groups because I don't think it uh, that all these seeds always hold value when we're talking about you know it's been months since we've really seen these guys play. Besides the spring series, that's about it. So I don't really mind that. The way he did it. Uh, we'll talk about that real quick, and then we'll go into the groups. He took what he considered the number one through four seed and put them all into separate groups. So he randomized them out. That was Team Envy, uh, Energy. Uh, well, I should just show it here. Team Envy, uh, Energy, G2, and Space Station. Then he took the next four, five through eight, same exact thing. Knights, Cloud9, Rogue, and Sonics, and that's how they played out. Then you go the last two teams from the RLCS and the two teams that qualified through the upper bracket. So that's why Loco and Plot Twist are here with Affinity and E United, followed by the, uh, the other teams that qualified Valance, Flight, Stromboli, and Mirage. So that's how we got to the teams where they are. Now, let's talk about the seeding. And that's the first thing I want to bring up really quick is uh, this is the same thing with Lawless Storm as well, where he invited top eight. And that included the Sonics. And like at this point, I don't think you can include the Sonics in a top eight seed anymore. Like, the last time that they won a game versus an RLCS team, let's go look. March 17th versus Pittsburgh Knights. That's three months ago. Three months is an eternity in Rocket League. So, they haven't had good results in many tournaments. Uh, so, that is a huge issue. Like, I think you could have made an argument uh, for Affinity, for LE United. One of those two teams probably needed to be in that group of the twos from the group stage. Like, I think, like, at this point, uh, the Sonics have to fall to 9 or 10. Now, there's a couple other things going on. Knights are not playing with Rettles. Team Envy is also not playing with Rettles. So, Rettles is just kind of sitting on the sidelines here. Rogue is playing with Corrupted G because Turin Turo is on vacation. So, you could say m maybe Rogue drops down as well because they're not using their normal roster. And I think that's a possibility. But he probably... Like gave them these seeds before that was known. Like I don't know if that's an excuse or not, but I think I could have seen both E United and Affinity move up, and I think there's an argument for Knights or Rogue to move down with the Sonics to move into this third tier because the Knights they haven't had the greatest success either uh, without Rettles. So I think it, uh, there's an argument there as well. Uh, but um, at the end of the day, the Sonics have a top eight seed. It's the same as Lawlers where they get invited into the tournament. But I need Sonics to prove me wrong, man. It's been a while since they've had a good result. So we'll see how that all plays out. Now let's talk about these groups. We'll start with Group A. Uh, Team MV, Knights, E United, and Valence. Um, well, I think this group is so-so. Like I think it's kind of hard because Rettles isn't playing with MV uh, after playing a tournament with them. So now they have to bring back Illusion. That makes them... Uh, easily the weakest of the top four just because of whatever's going on in that team chemistry. Um, so right there, you have one of the weaker teams there. We just talked about how the Knights could have possibly dropped down to 9 or 10 to be in that third tier. So immediately, this group is relatively easy. Uh, e United's on that bubble as well. And then Valance, we're not really too worried about them right now. Like the four seeds to cross the board, maybe Stromboli. But like outside of that, I'm not really too worried about them. Um, so group A relatively weak, um, in my opinion, then you move over to, uh, group B, you got energy and cloud nine Two solid rosters, obviously energy kind of slumping cloud nine with what's going on right now in the rumorville of like, is cloud nine dropping their org or not? Um, by the time this video comes out, who knows? Maybe it's not cloud nine anymore. I have no idea. Um, so that could make them a little bit of a weaker team. I think local and flight aren't 
you know, the highest caliber of teams in that group. Like, I think that this is a pretty big separation, top two to bottom two, but you never know what happens there. So I think, uh, you know, a generally even group there. Group C, you got G2 Esports, the number one team in all of North America, with Rogue, but they're not playing with their normal roster. Corrupt the G's a fill-in. That makes them a little bit weaker. But Affinity, like, I think is one of those teams that I am looking out for uh, coming into ROCS for the next season, where, like, I think that they can really make some moves. And then... You, you have Stromboli. They didn't have the greatest qualifiers, but, but they are a very solid team. So I think this group is very, very competitive. Probably the hardest group out of all of the groups. And I think it really comes down to, like, G2, they should win the group. There's obviously a chance they don't. Uh, but after that, with Rogue Affinity and Stromboli, depending on how corrupt the G is playing with the team, it could be anyone's game for number two here. Like, I think uh, that this one's a pretty big toss-up. I would give it to Affinity. But then also, like, if G2 is not looking too hot uh, early on because it's round robin, who knows? Like, they might be out on one loss if there's three two-in-one teams. So, uh, that this group is the most dangerous, I would say, and probably the worst group you would want to be, like, out of these top four teams. So, I think for G2, they got probably the hardest group. Uh, but then you move over to Group D. You got Space Station, a very, very solid team. Number two in NA. I think everyone would agree there. Then you have the Sonics, who I think are relatively uh, weak right now. Uh, plot twist, a pretty good team. And then Mirage. Um, so this one, I feel like Space Station probably comes out on top relatively easily. Like, I do think Plot Twist will leapfrog over Sonics, but I think overall, not that strong of a group. So I think Group C is definitely the strongest. A lot of people are saying Group A is really strong too, but I think it's also, you have to remember that uh, Envy's not playing with the roster that you would assume they want to be playing with right now. And the Knights obviously lost Rettles. Uh, too. So I think both these teams, sure, they're pretty good, and E United's uh, like pretty solid, but no one really stands out in this group. I think it is, for the number one seeds, obviously the weakest, so I think that hurts them as well for, uh, for that group. So moving forward, uh, going into predictions, so I think Envy will still play pretty well. So I think it's going to be Envy and E United coming out of uh, the, this group. But like, I don't think the Knights without Rettles is going to do a whole lot this year. Uh, but who knows? It depends on where rosters uh, go by the end of 2020. Um, and then moving on, like Energy and Cloud9 is pretty safe picks there. Th this one could be a toss-up of who gets in, uh, number one because Energy has been kind of in a slump. But I think Energy will prevail and they get the number one seed there. Then you move on. You have G2 Esports. Like, I think they're still going to make it. Like, I don't know how much they're trying right now, which I don't think is a bad thing. Like, it's the off season. We're probably going to see a lot of upsets because teams aren't really in form as much. Uh, but I think G2 Esports will still be that number one seed. I think Affinity will come out number two here uh, because I don't know exactly how well Corrupted G is going to do on Rogue. Um, I think Stromboli might even pass Rogue, depending on how that all plays out. But it'll be fun to see Crow versus G2, as always. And then you got Space Station... Easy number one there. And then I got Plot Twist followed by Sonics, followed by Mirage. So I think that's how it's going to play out uh, to show what's going to happen next in the tournament. So this is Group A and Group B will play today in five hours from now, uh, according to this video. And then Group C and Group D will play on June 11th. So again, Round Robin. We talked about, I'm not a huge fan of Round Robin. And there's reasons why we, like I had a little bit of a fight in uh, my YouTube comments for the last video. So go check that out if you want to see my full explanation there. Uh, but it just basically makes it so there's some games that there's a potential that they don't matter. And that is the big thing when it's like, you could just do double limb groups and then every game matters no matter what. Uh, sure, th those things might not happen, but why chance that, right? So th there is a chance games might not matter, but that's okay. We got a round robin top two advance. And then, so after you go down from 16 to 8, double um, elimination for the last two days. And I think it was kind of funny because I knew uh, Twitch Rivals was coming on Friday. That not too many people called out. It's like, this is really weird that like almost every single day for these next few months, we have a community event, except for that random Friday where Covert is not on. So they had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, nothing on Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday. So Saturday and Sunday will be the bracket because uh, Twitch Rivals was also announced and that will be on Friday with 16 content creators from North America battling out for $25,000. So that's going to be a good time. But go to Double Limb, which is going to be great on Saturday and Sunday. Tons of games to watch. I believe Daz has a B stream ready. He's got plenty of casters uh, to go through the group stage 
and then through playoffs as well. So definitely go check him out on his streams. But I think that's about it. That about wraps it up. Like I think we will see mostly uh, RLCS teams make it through. I think the one uh, outside shot, it would be Plot Twist uh, over the Sonics. And besides that, I think for the most part, it's going to be an RLCS heavy uh, bracket when we get to that point. So, But we'll see. We'll see who's in form, who's not. Will these roster moves matter that much or will, you know, Rogue, maybe they still play extremely well anyway without turn two. We'll have to see, but again, $9,000 on the line, $550 for the MVP, and then your prize in is right here. Top eight will get money, so if you make bracket, you at least get some change. First gets $4,000, so definitely go check out Dazzer and Stream all week long. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time.